Hi, I'm Carl Frotch, the super middleweight champion of the world, and you're watching Standing Eight Count. This is a Standing Eight Count special report. Knowing he was down on all the scorecards heading into the 12th and final round, Carl Froch knew he needed a knockout to beat Jermaine Taylor. And with 14 seconds left in the 12th and final round, that's exactly what Froch did, knocking out Taylor. And afterwards, he told us the point at which he knew he had to start putting the foot on the gas. You know, you had said that you knew you had to put the foot on the gas at some point. I want you to tell me right now exactly what point did you decide in this fight, now I have to put the foot on the gas. What point was that? Probably, um, I think it was start around nine or ten i know i had three more rounds to go i think around ten you think you've got two rounds to go but you've got three you've got ten eleven and twelve and i think it was then where i thought i'm out jabbing him i'm out boxing him but he's got the knockdown and he's caught me with some eye-catching shots so i need to i need to put it on him and take it to him but i need to do it cleverly without getting counterpunched. And every time I put it on him and threw the left up right hand down the pipe, it was guarding himself and he had, he had a very good defense. And um, I, I, wasn't getting, I wasn't getting the success I wanted. Um, but then I, I realized that he was flagging a little bit, he was struggling, he was, he was tiring himself. So um, I'd say round, round 10, I thought, right, this is it. I need three big rounds. Do you remember the punch specifically that you said to yourself, okay, I have him now? Do you remember the punch that you may have thrown that at that point you said to yourself, okay, now I'm going to take advantage of this? I don't think I can. I can just remember having him in the corner, a couple of shots. I think I threw a right hand and he stumbled back a bit and I thought, oh, he's hurt there. And um, then we moved around into the corner and I, I put him down in the corner and I thought he's not getting up. And he got up, you know, so and then I thought, I'm tired myself now. I still don't want to get caught with a counter punch because he was waiting, he was looking, he's got a good uppercut. And um, to answer your question, I don't know, I can't remember the punch that hurt him bad, but the finish was the finish was good enough for the referee to jump in, it really was. Being a great deep water fighter and a guy that likes to go into those last few rounds, the championship rounds as they're called, how did you feel knowing that right up until that eighth round that it looked as if certainly, you know, that of course he was ahead on the scorecards and you probably would need a knockout? What was going through your mind at that point? I mean, you know you're a good deep water fighter, so what were you thinking? I was really disheartened that I was behind on points and I couldn't get my shots together and every time I tried to rough him up and get him going, it was countering me and jabbing me and hitting him with the right hand and a couple of body shots. I was disappointed with myself. I was a little bit concerned. Um, but as soon as I started throwing the right hand down the pipe and catching him, I could see him getting hurt. Um, so that showed me that next time, if I fought him or fought anybody of his level, all I need to do is throw the punches. Like Thomas Hearns, he, he once said, if I'm hitting them, they're not hitting me. Throw the punches and it hurts them, it breaks them down, and it does. I was waiting too long tonight. I waited too, too long. But you learn from fighting. And I'm, I'm, I'm a 25 and 0 fighter now, and that fight's brought me on like the last fight before that's brought me on and I'll be a better fighter for it. And certainly that knockdown was the first time of course that you had been knocked down and I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from that as well. Is that a correct assessment? Definitely yeah you learn a lot from that, that kind of experience. I went down and I, I was I was shaken up a little bit but it's easy to give up and think you know this fight's over he's catching me he's strong I'm in trouble but I kept with it I stuck with it there's no way I'm going to I'm going to lie down and, and let somebody take my belt, my livelihood and my, what I've worked all, my, all these years for. And um, it'd have had to nail me down to the canvas like I did him to win that belt. I was prepared to go out tonight on my shield. And from round 10, 11 and 12, I was prepared to get knocked out myself trying to knock him out because then I can sleep at night knowing that I've given my best rather than going home thinking, you know, I still had some energy left in the tank there. What, what, what did I do that for? Because I've done that before as an amateur. I did it in the World Championship semi-finals and I didn't give it everything. And... Um, that's why a, a good amateur pedigree is important because you, you take all that experience into the pros. It's a learning curve. And it's all that experience that I brought in with me that got me through that fight tonight. And my last question would be, how good does it make you feel right now knowing that prior to this fight, a lot of people were like, we don't know Carl Froch. Who is he? Now I think a lot of people are going to know exactly who Carl Froch is in this country. How does that make you feel? I mean, after this performance, it must feel great. Yeah, I think it will feel better when, I've, when it's sunk in. I woke up tomorrow and my, my nose, the swelling on my nose has gone down and my neck's not hurting and my hand's not hurting so much. But no, it is. It's, it's a great feeling, um, a feeling of justice and you know, acknowledgement from, from the fight fans and from the, from the boxers around the world and on American soil as well. 
I'm elated, I really am. It's fabulous, it's fantastic. I've come over to America and I beat a guy like Jermaine Taylor in, in an epic battle. I'm, I never make my fights easy like I should do. When I get behind the jab, it's easy. But, you know, with a knockdown in round three, it, it just sort of tamed me a little bit. I was a little bit like a whip dog early on and I was, I was tentative and I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then I thought, you know, I've waited too long, I've got to do what I can do. As soon as I put my shots together, my strong, heavy shots, my arsenal, he couldn't handle it. I should have done it from round three and round four and round five. Saying that, I was going to try and start doing that, but I got caught with a shot and I was on the floor. That's boxing. So I needed to regroup, you know, go back to neutral, have a look, jab, see what he was doing. And he didn't, he wasn't doing much after that. And when he knew I was jabbing him, he, he didn't want to come in himself. He was thinking, well, I've got the knockdown. He was like trying to sit in the comfort zone. He blew that himself tonight. As much as I took it off him, he blew it as well. I, that's why I think, I don't know what you think, but it's a bit of both there. But, you know, the champion came through in the end and did what he had to do. Reporting from the MGM Grand Theatre at Foxwoods, I'm AJ Vitone for Standing 8 Count. This was a Standing 8 Count special report.